Okay, well, hi, everyone, and thank you very much for watching or listening. Liam Hartree here today with another episode of Presenting Champions, and today I'm joined by a very, very special guest, Marcelo Renda, former professional boxer known as Cello, who has some incredible achievements um, during his career. Obviously, two-time prize fighter finalist, won a British title eliminator, won the uh, Southern Area Super Middleweight title, challenged for the English title twice, uh, was known as a fierce puncher throughout his career. He was in there with some fantastic names. Um, so today we're going to be talking about not only boxing, but we're going to be talking about what Cello is doing now um, in his life. He's doing some amazing work in the present day. We're going to be talking about mindset, motivation, some really good yeah. topics. So, Champ, thank you again for coming on the show, and it's an uh, absolute pleasure to have you here today, mate, 100%. Yeah, thanks for having me, mate, as always, mate. Um any opportunity I can talk about my career, you know, what I've been through, any sort of anything, any top tips I'm able to sort of bring across and what I can do. So I even talk about my life now away from boxing and how and how my life has helped how my boxing sort of careers helped me live the life I'm living today. So yeah, when you fire away as many questions as you want, mate, and I'll be sure to answer more. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, I am actually going to start with the present day, first of all, and then we'll go back in time in a minute and we'll reflect on, on some fights. But um, getting a feel for some of what you're doing now, post-boxing, um, you're doing some some amazing work. Can you share with us a little bit about uh, what your life is like in the present day, please? Yes, of course, can. So, yeah, so I've been retired now, five, coming up to five years. I know it's absolutely crazy how quick it's gone. But I've not even had time to think about retirement since I've been retired, you know. I'm doing, I'm still very heavily involved in the boxing game, you know. I'm a head coach of the boxing future at a charity school. So the charity the, the, um, the char- I work for is called Boxing Futures. We're a young mental health charity. So we have young people who want education or employment or on the version of going down the wrong path. And then so what we do, we offer boxing training and also the therapeutic side of it as well. We do all different types of programs. We work with school, colleges, offenders, youth offenders, um, and those that those young people. We are suffering from sort of mental health issues as well. So we 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 have all wide wide range of stuff over in London, Cambridge, Peter. We've got a gym in Peter that we we that work out of. Also, we can move to a different sort of like London and Cambridge. So yeah, man, so it's been it's been fantastic, and um, also do private one to ones as well. On top of that. That people really want to sort of know, want to know my expertise. They 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 are do one to one training as well. I do about twenty or twenty plus a week on top of my full time job boxing or boxing futures. Um, and also got my um, I've got my British Boxing Board of Control license. Um, so again, I I ain't trained on any fighters as of yet, but I've got my license there just in case anyone who's ever turned up want me to train. I've got one young lad that looking to turn pro. So that's me down a lot that could happen. But yeah, life's good for me, man. Real, real good, real good. Absolutely. Amazing work you're doing, giving your knowledge and giving your expertise yeah. back to uh, the next generation or anyone who wants to uh, learn or develop. I love that. I absolutely love that because, you you know, you have a lot to share. Uh, with that job, what is your favourite part of it then? Can you describe with us how, how you feel when you see people sort of developing and improving yeah. in their lives through the work that, that you do? Yeah, because a lot, a lot of these people that we work with are lacking motivation, lacking self drive, um, no, got no, no social connection. They're, um, they're really sort of down, down in the dumps, really, mate. And a boxing just a tool that allows them to gain that confidence and allows them to gain, you know, that those 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 life skills and people skills you need day to life. And it makes me so happy when I'm, I'm able through boxing, be able to see them flourish. As the week's gone on, you know, seeing them flourish and just through boxing, just through what boxing allowed, what boxing taught me, I'm able just to express it to them, you know, and, and to see them flourish and see them week in, week out, like I mentioned, gain confidence and come out of their shells and, and be, you know, I mean, just making friends, building up better relationships, you know, making connections with the family again and more getting jobs or going back into education. That's the beauty about boxing, beauty. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it changes lives, mate. This is the thing. I mean, I've seen uh, boxing, whether people compete or not, I've seen it change people from addiction, yes. mental health problems, yes. uh, weight loss, you know, low self-esteem, any type of thing. And it is it is very, very healing. So uh, it's wonderful work you're doing. Yes. 
And just to uh, give one other thing about that as well, um, if there's anyone listening to this who is sort of chasing a dream or a goal in life or they have something that they're aiming for, whether it's in boxing or whether it's in another life area, could you give us one or two pieces of advice that you'd like to pass on to, to those people listening to this, even if they're people you never meet in person, they can still learn from you? Yeah. You know? My, my, my advice would always be take day by day, you know, don't, think too far ahead. Same to myself when I when I when I turn pro, you know, I talk, you know, each fight that come. Uh, I, the, the, you've got to have a goal. You know, my always the goal was always become a champion, you know. And my and I always say to people, you know, set each day to come, set little little tasks. Try and achieve them little tasks. And then when you that goal that you want to achieve, you'll get there bit by bit. So how I how I go and also give it hundred and ten percent. Be focused, be dedicated. And then if things don't turn out, like I can for myself, things never do was to turn out. At least I can say, do you know what? I love this one time that I used to have. If things never worked out, at least I can say, do you know what? I'll give 110%. But yeah, just take the eight days to come, be the best person you can every day, um, and, and try your best to try your best in anything that we do in life. Absolutely, yeah. Some great advice. Absolutely great advice yeah. here. Now, uh, one other thing with that, and then we'll go back and look at some of your key fights and everything. Yeah. One other thing with that, though, when it comes specifically to boxing, you know, and people who are starting out in a career in boxing, it's a pretty big question. So maybe if we could have one or two things they need to do, but maybe one or two things they need to avoid as well that maybe they don't know about when they're just starting out as well, if that makes sense. A little bit of your advice for, yeah, you know. Um, so me, the one thing to stay away, it sounds really, really silly, girls, that's one thing, because when, um, that's a big thing. And um, friends who are going to be taking down that wrong path. Friends who are, you know, want you down the path, want you to be um, partying and doing stuff you shouldn't be doing. I never did any of that. And I lost some contact with most of my friends through the games. Quite a lonely sport, really, boxing. And then you try and sell tickets. It's hard because you, you've not not seen your mates no more because you don't really want to be in that circle anymore because you're so dedicated with, with, um, with the boxing. So, so, and also, you know, Keep up the drink and drugs, almost on never did any of that sort of stuff, you know. That's one the 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 thing. When you reach eighteen, when you're an amateur, those sort of things aren't really there. But when you reach eighteen and you start to establish drinking and, and drugs and girls, people tend to have a fantastic amateur. When once once they reach eighteen, they don't tend to do it because those those um those things tend to get in the way. And it seems that and what happens is they it overcomes it and they end up going down that road. I know a lot of people in the game of boxing that once those turn pro don't seem to do it because those distractions took the better of them you know what I mean so they're, they're, they're the distractions and what was your question you saying sorry um, so that was a couple of things to avoid and then I think yeah. the other side of it was a couple of things that you would advise them um, that are essential for their success or things they should do basically you know yeah so yeah so yeah when, when um what you should do most importantly is um listen to listen to per the people close near you, close to you, you know not people that you know um no 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 sort of like meaning to your career listen to your coaches listen to people i mean listen to your mum and dad because they're they've got your best interest at heart not your mate that you see every weekend every other weekend they go down a beer with a, go down to pub with for a beer don't listen to what he's got to say be level-headed you know be level-headed um and listen to the close people around, especially those I love you. Um, they've got your best interests at heart. And also, listen to yourself as well. Listen to yourself. You you know you you know you you know yourself better than anybody else. Like myself, I knew myself better than anyone else. So if they're telling me I need this new do hold on, I know myself. I know oh, I should be doing that, so I'm going to do it. So no, so listen to your gut instinct as well. Absolutely, yeah. It's some amazing advice there, champ. And as I mentioned to you, it's a big part of the reason why I do these as well as sort of yeah. pass on some of that knowledge and everything. Now, on the subject of this, obviously, I know you uh, you avoided the uh, the drinking the drugs and all that type. Yeah. Of thing. You are in a good position to mentor these kids, not only for what you've achieved, but mm -hmm. as I understand it, going back to when you were a teenager yourself, um, you you were doing a bit of street fighting, and a few people around Peterborough felt your your legendary power, didn't they? So you're in a yes. position to sort of steer people away from that life, I think, you know, as well. Yeah, because um, so before I turned pro, uh, I got myself, I, I say it's a father, but I was never ever a bully. I, never, I want to bring that across. I was never ever a bully. I never went out there to cause 
to punch to fire people for sake of fire people. But with me, I never you never used to know how to walk away. Obviously, it's about them. I was knocking guys out. You know, I was only like little eighteen or seventeen. I'm knocking guys out. I mean, grown ass men. And one one occasion, I ended up knocking some kid out. I say kid, uh, I call him one kid. Um, knocking out some some guy in his thirties. Um, and one night out of town, and I'm knocking him out, and then he got caught on CCTV camera, and then before you know, got arrested and put on put gone to prison, and then um, uh, I got arrested and then got and then got found um, guilty. So I ended up doing community service and got a big hefty fine. And it was it was then when I thought to myself, you know what, I need to I need, I just need to turn pro straight away because I need to earn some money. Didn't really have a, really have a job, so I didn't have anything to fall back on. Well, let's go around and go and turn pro. And do you know what? Let's let's punch people in the face and get paid, rather than get myself into trouble. And that's exactly what I did. I knew I could punch. I was knocking guys out of school, knocking guys out on the streets. Do you know what? I can punch a bit. I don't mind having a fight, you know. And let's 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 you know, let's let's turn pro. Um, and that's how, that's that's the mentality that I had. I didn't I didn't know the game like I know now. Uh, but then I was like, yeah, let's let's have a fight, and and, 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 and turn pro at eighteen. Yeah. Well, this is something else as well. As you said, you didn't, you know, you didn't know the name of the game then, like you know it now. And yeah, I mean, you started off with some tough tests. I mean, your first opponent was uh, seven and zero, oh, I believe. Uh, yeah. Next opponent after that, uh, he was making his debut. Obviously, your second fight. So you really, you know, you jumped in the deep end. You didn't start off with a journeyman and, and all this stuff. Right. What was the reason for for that at the time? Because I had a manager, I didn't know what he was doing. As a manager, all he always saw was pound coins, and he didn't care about my welfare. Jump me in there, go in there, and have a fight. You know, I'm looking after a fight, mate. It's just ludicrous, mate. Ludicrous because you should, I shouldn't be going in the real ring with somebody. Remember, I have no amateur experience whatsoever. No amateur, no amateur, amateur experience. My first professional fight, my first, didn't do any other uh, martial arts type stuff. No kickbox, no cry. So I have no experience in whatsoever. I'm going in there with someone seven and home with a week's notice or two weeks' notice who's who I'm giving away over a Estonian weight. He's two time kickboxing world champion, he's got a bag, bag of experience. He's unbeaten as professional. What the hell did he thought about me going in there with him? Look, I knocked him out, but it's not the point. Not the point, you know, because, you know, anything could happen. I, I, he could have beat him, I could not, he could have knocked me out before, before he knew it. I would have probably thought the part I didn't, but I probably thought, you know what? I'm like, probably this game. I ain't doing this game anymore. But I shouldn't be getting there with him. And then um, in that fight, and it hurt my hand. And um, um, and I got offered a fight a, a month or so later, or whatever it was. I can't remember now. It must be not long later. I got offered a fight to fight Joey Vegas. We heard nothing of him. We didn't know who he was. My manager didn't know who he was. Well, we should have done a job properly. Um, he ended, I found out he was like a, um, a silver medalist in the Commonwealth Games, boxed 100 times for Uganda. I think, hold on a minute, what the hell am I getting the ring with someone like him? With a boat, with a bad hand. And then the fight, it twisted my angle. So that fight was absolutely a nightmare for me, that fight was. Um, inexperienced against, against a guy who's a lot more experienced than me. What the hell am I getting in the ring for? And I've got to pay my manager 25% for that. In the end, in the, in the end, down the down the down, down the line, things happen to me, man. Which no doubt we'll talk about later on. But yeah, that shouldn't be happening. You know what I mean? Throughout my whole career, I've been in having hard fights against opposition I shouldn't be in there with. You know, um, with me though, with, with, without me, a lot many people probably would have would have carried on. But I'm so determined, and so focused, and so resilient. Nothing was ever going to stop me. But not only that as well, I, no, I thought to myself, I weighed it up, thinking to myself. Okay, I have no amateur fights, I have no experience, I have no one to train with, I have no one's training me, I have no one to spar with. I'm getting there with someone who's boxing in the in the in the, in the Commonwealth Games, picked up a silver medalist, boxing in the for country. What? Bloody hell, of course I'm in my own. Okay, it's beating him, of course tomorrow, of course he has, because I shouldn't be in there with him. That's me for my whole career, mate. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And and as I said earlier, I mean, it, it, in a way, you can use that as a positive now. 
people who are coming through, you know, so they don't get into those situations. They don't have that. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah play two-time kickboxing world champion, undefeated uh, boxer, Commonwealth Games, and his second fight. I mean, bloody hell, it takes some, some balls of steel. You know, you can say what you like about um, the fact you shouldn't have been in there, but absolutely, you know, it, it, your heart was showing early on. Um, obviously, then after the, the Commonwealth Games guy and all that, that side of things, that fight didn't go your way, but you kept going and, you know, you were putting some wins together. More than talking about the specific fights themselves, talking about your mental resilience, you know, and how you sort of um, regrouped from things that didn't go to plan and bounced back. Can you share with us a little bit about what your mindset was like, what your expectations were like from, from boxing at that point in time in your career, if that makes sense? Yeah, of course, yeah, because what, what I was thinking of is like, you know, I mean, I'm in, I'm in Peterborough. We, 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 we haven't got much options in Peterborough, you know. There's not much, no, no, nothing's around here. There's no, there's no train, there's no fire, there's no box, there's no one I can train with. Um, um, I, I had no one to sort of like look up to. So I was only myself and people boxing at, at a time. Um, and for me, it was like, you know, that my goal was always to become a champion, you know. And, and in that school, you know, I didn't listen, I didn't pay attention, I left school, no qualification, I didn't like that school. But I was completely, obviously, when it come to boxing, I was out running on my own. No one never used to ring me up, Chelo, you running? I was out running. Chelo, you didn't come to the gym? I was in that gym. First one in, first one out, last one out, sorry. First one, last one out. Always give only 10%. Always, always willing to work hard, train hard. Just, just, just what boxing, that's what boxing done to me. I don't know why, why it was, because maybe... You know, I wanted to achieve, mate, because that school I never achieved anything, and people thought that I would never achieve in boxing game. I didn't want to have that. I didn't want to have that sort of to be labelled a person never achieved. And for me, it was to try and prove people wrong that I could achieve. But if I, if I brought, if I, um, if I sort of like did it the right way, if I set, if I brought myself to in, what I'm trying to say is that like when I want, if I, if I brought myself the right way, you know, carried carried myself, carried myself the right way. I knew I could do something in the game of boxing by making sure the stuff I did at school, I didn't do in boxing, dedicating myself. Um, so I just want to prove, I want to prove people wrong, I want to prove myself wrong, and make a man, make a make a career out of it, and make a life out of it, you know. And and I, I, I knew when I was going to get when I got beaten, and sometimes I got beat where I shouldn't have got beat. There's, there's times in the fight where I won the fight, fought Ricardo Sams and like. Referee had to hold me hand and he hold on, he's about to, about to pull up and he's dropped it and lift the other guy's hand. I'm thinking, hold on, what's going on here? Um, so for me, it's about ensuring that I'm not, not letting myself down and I'd be proud of myself. And and, and when I have kids one day, I want them to be proud of myself as well as we are now. And I've got pictures all around me house, I've got belts hanging up on all my, my, my cabinets and stuff like that. I've got videos and newspaper articles. And that's something I always joked about when I was when I was when I was going through the game. Like that is what I wanted to do. And I, I ended up doing it the hard way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, making something of yourself, proving people wrong, all that yeah. makes sense 110%. I mean, you definitely did that and then some. Um, the hard way, okay, yeah, but still it's a lot to be proud of, you know, with that side of things. Um, obviously we'll come to some uh some more fights now in just a minute. Yeah, go but yeah. with that, I mean, it is a good question, isn't it? When you look back on your career now, which moments you are personally the most proud of and which which moments are personally your favourites? And I mean, it's quite a big question with the amount of uh, mm-hmm. the amount of fights you have. But as soon as we're on the topic of it, you know, when you look around your house now, you've got these photos and these belts yeah. and things you look back on, which ones are your personal favourites, basically? Oh, so they, they're very, very tricky. I mean, so many memories. Like, yeah. when, I won my, when I won my first professional title, when I won the British Masters title away from home against a lad who's undefeated, Steve Eve, and, and beating a box my home in Southampton in front of us when over a thousand people there. And he boxed on the road as well, where he, he, he caused a few upsets. So he's not had a, he's not had a padded record where it was unbeaten boxing, getting a box no, but I don't, I don't, I don't like to call, I don't like to use the word bums because no one's a bum. Um, um, when he boxed Paddy Reck or people that you know he could beat, known for what he could beat, he went out there and boxed on the road and got some wins. So I was up against it, and he um, and he could punch as well. And I got off the fight again for the for the, for the British Masters, and I thought, you know, what, what, what a great opportunity! So I just fought Prince Aaron for it. 
And I lost that by 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 on points, even though I knocked him down in the first round. And he ended up he ended up just keeping me up behind his jab throughout the whole fight. He didn't want to engage with me. And then I got off the fight like two, three months, no, two months later, again for the British Masters against TV. I thought, yeah, I've got to take it, I took it. I took it, went over to Southampton and knocked him out in two rounds. That was a massive achievement for me to be able to win my first first title and become the first professional boxing champion in Peter for over 20 years. And then, there's another aspect, but when I made my Sky Sports debut against Conroy McIntosh, who went on to cause some massive upsets, knocking down Darren Barker, and that, that was a bit controversial as well, the way Darren Barker ended up winning that fight, and I am knocking him out in one round. You know, and, and having those main memorable fights on Sky Sports, you know, I've had quite a few fights on Sky Sports, like a double knockout with Paul Samuels, you know, that went on to, that come on, went on to become a massive hit. And then you go on to think about my, my prize fights, you know, my Murray final. That was an absolute classic. So people talk about it today. Many people thought I won that fight. You know, even when my man went on to become a like, multi-time challenger for the world title. And then, no, that's unbelievable as well. And then I went on to win the seven era title and beating Paul, um, Leon McKenzie, knocking him out in the ninth round. You know, only giving a month's notice for that fight. Uh, many people thought he was going to beat me. It was pretty even going into the ninth round. And knocking him out, you know, in the night France. I've many, many um too far too far too hard to try and pick out one for me. There's so many memorable moments from my old career. Um and the win the amount of good wins I've got throughout my career and yeah, it's been a memorable, memorable one, really, a memorable one. And very hard for me to pick out one or two, very much so. Yeah, but it's it's great to get some of the highlights, you know, because I love asking that question because yeah. you never know what answer is going to come back and it's different for different people and it's not yes. their biggest wins either, you know. It's not always that way. Sometimes it's something else that you don't expect and everything. And I just, I, I could see the memories coming back so strong, you know, when you were um, when you were sharing that. Uh, sorry, so I don't say, I forgot about this moment as well. When I went on with my British, my British title living there against um, Sam Hall, live from Sky Sports, Chief Sports, Malchie Matlin, uh, when he fought for the European title and knocking him out in, in, in two rounds went on to become a big, big win for me and to be ranked well inside the top 10 and finally could afford for British titles. That was another good win as well. I thought I had to put that in there, mate. Yeah, that one's got to be in there, absolutely. I mean, it, there's so much to be proud yeah. of. And uh, I mean, this is the thing about doing interviews like this. I love to talk about every single fight, but, you know, yeah, we would be here until next week, wouldn't we? So <laughs> I think this is the thing to sort of condense it, you yeah. know. And, um, when it comes to your power, though, that's another good topic as well. Yeah. I mean, your power, would you say it's pretty much natural, pretty much something you were born with? I mean, I know you must have worked on it, but it sounds like you always had a, a natural punch. Would you Would you agree with that? You know what, mate? Everyone always mentions that to me. And I 100% agree you're naturally born with it. I do believe that. Don't get me wrong. You've got to have the right technique. You've got the right distance. You've got the right timing. The punch got to be the right at the right time. I get all that, and I've got to do a lot of ball slamming, and I've got to do a tire, tire flipping and the weights. I get all that, yeah, you know, that's how to a degree. But I do generally believe it, mate. Like I said before, I'm proved in, in, in this interview, like you know, I'm knocking guys out when I was a kid, I was knocking men out when I, when I was 17, 16, 17, and proved that way. I wasn't even, even in my debut, when I was 18 years old, 18, 19, knocking out a 30 odd year old man. Knock him out in two rounds, you know. I've born with it. You know, I you know, I'm hitting the bag today, I'm knocking off his injuries still, you know, because you know, yeah, I, I know that's one thing he never loses, is he's, he's that knockout power. And um yeah, I, I do believe you know you're born with it. I do generally do believe that, yeah, for sure, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And on the subject of power and, and some of the behind the scenes stuff, when it comes to your training and everything like that. Um, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, during those early fights and everything like that, you weren't having a lot of um, advice with the training. But when your training developed and went along a little bit, what was some of your favourite parts of like maybe, you know, if you enjoyed the sparring, maybe you enjoyed the road work? I mean, you said just now about how disciplined you were. Obviously, that, that speaks for itself. But I'm curious just to get like in your daily routine as a pro, um, which bits of the training you enjoyed the most? Do you know what, mate? I... I I train myself really. I never had a anyone tell me you know, what Monday to Friday looked like. My Monday to Friday looked like what I said it looked like, and that was you know doing your runs, doing your bag work, you know, um, doing pad work. Yeah, if if I'm when I could get it, I very rarely could do pads. 
So can get on two community pads in, in Peebra at a time. You know, so wherever, wherever, wherever we could, I was like, mate, can you give me some pads for a bit, please? Just have me hit something rather than hitting a bag or a bloody day. Mate, you couldn't give me some pads for you. I didn't care about how good they were. Just a little bit different, you know. Um, spars, you know, spar whoever I could. And then there's some opportunities sometimes I could get some spars where I went off and sparred Matthew Matlin, you know, for his European tile fights and British tile fights. I went up to Manchester quite a few times. And then Paul Smith got in contact with me. I went to Paul Smith for a while to get ready for his British tile shot. Um, whoever could get spars with, you know, I would. But during the whole uh, whole camp, I enjoyed also I enjoyed all the training. I just I still that never leaves me. I still train now. Train I trained yesterday, you know. I'm always out running, I'm always hitting a bag. I don't spar I I, I just stopped sparring just like this the past year because I thought myself, oh, I weighed up, I thought myself, bloody hell, I'm still sparring brilliantly hard. What, what, what am I doing this still for? You know, I don't need to be doing it anymore no because I didn't see at the age of 15. I can't keep getting hit in the head all the time. So I had to, had to stop that because I don't mind doing some technical stuff, but nothing like where it's going to give me a headache all the time. I had to stop that. So for me, training is, um, I enjoyed all of it with training. You know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed training. I did. I loved it. I loved the way it made me feel. The way I used to feel, I used to feel on top of the world, feel great, feel fit, feel sharp, feel alert. I, I loved it, I loved it. The only thing I didn't like was, was making weight. I'm sure fighters would say the same, but I love training. I absolutely love, still love it today. You know, I love it, absolutely love it. That's why I'm still in good shape. Still got the six pack, you know. Uh, I've got to, because it just means if I, look, if I feel good and look good, it just means my mind, the world are good. So for me, training, I love training. I loved, it, loved all of it, loved all of it. Absolutely, yeah. Well, it's first of all, it's great to get an insight into that sort of behind the scenes. But as well as that, I mean, yeah, the fact you were doing your own thing and, you know, you're training yourself. I mean, I think it's absolutely incredible given um, everything you've achieved. And it shows, you know, with the hard work and dedication, not to sound cliche or whatever, but I mean, it is true, you know. Yeah. I do believe, like, you know, if I did, if I lived somewhere in a big city, like with, with you know, like Manchester's and London's and Birmingham's with, you know, Fighters out there, cause, you know, and trainers out there, I could be with and train with. Mate, I know for a fact, I know for 110%, because I had world class knockout power. I could knock out anybody, anybody. Anyone from, I was middleweight, super, lively, I could knock anybody out. I really do believe that. And many people say the same. And anyone you speak to, you know, Matthew Matlin and Paul Smith, the two, I reckon two high profile guys, has all said to me on one of the biggest punches I've been in with, you know. Um, I know for a fact I would have gone to become British champion, maybe in fourth for European, maybe win European titles, because I, I was so dedicated to the, sport, to the sport. I was so, 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 so on it, you know, so determined, so resilient. And oh, oh man, I, I, I would have done it. I know because my mindset was so strong, I was never going to get beat. And I would have gone to go and do some new more, but more, more better stuff. Really would have gone and gone and won more titles, more titles for sure. But you know, I'm in P, bro limited to what, what you got in the area, you know? And I didn't really want to commute. I didn't want to live away from home. I didn't want to go and live in Manchester. I didn't want to go and live in a, in a one-bedroom flat. It's not because obviously, you know, a good fight is a happy fire. And, I've, and it, it, I wouldn't have been happy. So I needed to be at home, you know? I'm a bit of a homeboy. I'm not, I'm not allowed to admit that. I am. I didn't mind, you know, going over and for a day or two. I always go over to the spa Catley. I slept in the gym in the gym sofa for like two days. You know, Jen King Catley goes, she can spar. And we, we got a hit off straight away. And I kept going back to Manchester. You know, I was not, I went on the bloody, uh, on the coach. It took me like five hours to get there. And then get, once I get there, I'm in the ring sparring him. And once I sparred him, I sleep on the sofa and back in again sparring the ring with him. I didn't mind doing stuff like that for a day or two, but couldn't live there week in, week out. Couldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have liked it. And not only that, not wouldn't have liked it. Financially, I couldn't have done it. How, but I had no sponsors. Not that I had a sponsor. Maybe I say I probably couldn't do it. If I had a sponsor, you know, who was going to pay me to go there and put money in my bank, maybe I probably would have, you know, because I had none of that. So how, I couldn't live out there. What live with what? With what? How, who was going to pay for me to live out in, in Birmingham or Manchester? None of them would pay for me. Maybe I might have done. I don't know. But the opportunity wasn't there, so I didn't touch. I didn't do it. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, 
This is something that I've, I've got a lot of respect for with yourself is, you know, how you made things happen um, the hard way. And I know it's not always going to be an ideal thing for you, but at the same time, what you achieved, even when you had certain things stacked yeah. against, basically, you know, in the simplest way, I still think is, is amazing. It shows if you want something bad enough, you can yeah. go and get it, you know. Um, on the subject of that as well, or the training side of things, I want to just touch on the mental side of things as well, um, because I don't know if it's if this is talked about enough. When it was coming to like a build up to a big fight or whatever, I mean, I know you <laughs> obviously you had some um, short notice ones as well, so it might be yes. different there. But in terms of like what was going through your mind on the build up to a fight, a lot of people now they talk about this visualizing and they talk about like these different type of things. Other people go the other way; they they put it out of their head altogether, and people have different techniques is what I'm getting at basically when it came to you and you were getting close to a fight in terms of being mentally tough as well as physically what was mm -hmm. your method for for that side of things because it's something people don't see from the outside looking in if, if you get what I mean you know yeah but uh, yeah I, I did you know 100% 100% I, I used to visualize what I do in the first round people said that they don't visualize I don't agree with them I think they do I think they don't like to admit they do with the they would visualize. Of course, you're gonna visualize. You're gonna visualize in, in, in camp when you're shadow boxing. You know, you're gonna visualize what your opponent's gonna do. You're gonna you shadow box to, to what is gonna be in front of you. So you're trying to visualize what what they're gonna do and how you're gonna go about doing it. You don't shadow box to for the sake of shadow box. You shadow box to for what you're gonna do on fight night. You know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. So you are so in actual fact you are visualizing because you're shadow boxing to what you're gonna be doing in fight. That's how I was. How I shadow box when I was smiles in camp. I know, and I, I, I hundred percent would, would visualize my my opponent, what I was going to do, how I was going to go about it. And for me, my mindset would always be this, mate. Always be this, like anything. I always said to myself, if I give myself, I train well, do everything right, which I always used to do, make weight right, which I never used to make weight great because I'm not my end, no nutritionist. So for me, it's about trying never making weight. Um, as long as I did my runs, as long as I spars, as long as I give hundred ten percent, I was going to ring. Pretty confident because my mindset would be right because I didn't do so I did everything I had was that that was meant that I was meant to do, you know. Um, so I was never in any doubt because I was able to have the right mindset because I did everything that needed to happen. Um, um, so mindset wise, I, I, I always should go in the ring pretty confident, really. Yeah. So certainly sometimes always go in the ring where it's maybe go in the ring with a bit of an injury where. That used to, that used to sort of like dwell in my mind. It's a couple of times I got into big, big fights where I had an injury. Like went in there for a British title eliminate against um, Sam Orton. I just barred Matthew Martin over in Manchester and he crapped my rib. I thought to myself, "Oh God, what's going to happen?" So my mind had to be strong. So what I did was I thought to myself, "Right, okay." I remember I was gone, so I can't spar. I know come fight night. You know, the adrenaline's going to be pumping. So when it does hit me in the rib or whatever, you know, I'm, the adrenaline was pumping so much that I'm not going to be able to feel it as much. Because what happens normally, when I get, because normally I always used to suffer from hand injuries, yeah? And it never used to hurt me in the fight until I got into the training thing, oh, my hand hurts. Well, I hope not, man. I never used to think that in the fight. So I thought to myself, the, the, the adrenaline would be pumping. So maybe I won't be able to feel it as much. So I thought, I've got to take the fight. So I took it. The same as me with um with um I fought, I fought Leon McKenzie for the seven area. I couldn't spar for a month, so I'm gonna crap my bloody rib. And I didn't spar and I thought to myself, the adrenaline be pumping. I thought once I'm in there and the rush blushing through my through my head and I'm on, I'm, my mind's on it, I'll be alright. And that's how mindset I used to have when I used to go with, with an injury because I couldn't pull out of the fight because it was, too, it was a massive opportunity, you know, for seven area, one for the British title in there. There's a big, big opportunity. might not come around again. Not like I've got a big, massive promoter behind me feeding me, feeding me opponents and I've got set dates and this fight don't happen. I've got another fight in two months' time. Maybe I would have pulled out because the fight's going to happen in two months' time because I didn't have that. I had to take him. So my mindset was always, you know, always thinking positive, always thinking never, yeah, just think negative. And that's what mindset I have in my day-to-day -day life today. Absolutely. Yeah. That is awesome. I mean, there's some powerful life lessons in there as well, you know, that people can... Yeah. I mean, boxers can pick up on it and use it, but people who are doing anything, whether, you know, it's a business goal, education, yeah. they're doing, they can use that those mindset tips and, um, and gain a lot from that. Now, with another thing with this, people always want to know about 
the toughest fights and everything is something that's a very you know a very fan friendly question. But Hello? before we get into that with the toughest fights, hold on, who's Oh, yeah. mate. So you, yeah. broke, you broke up there, mate. So you broke up. Oh, there. No worries. Yeah, you, you froze for just a minute. Don't worry. We'll uh, I'll just carry on from there. I was just saying about like toughest fights and everything, but I was saying that um, when people want to know about that, obviously it's not always the you know the hardest hitter like what you said there but having a cracked rib going into the fight anyway usually it's something like that that's going on outside the ring but you know you have to focus through it to, to sort of get it done anyway but um you mentioned that one with the cracked rib which other ones stand out for you as being the toughest fights of your career in one way or another even if it's a technical yeah. side or something like that you know yeah, it's definitely yeah, i've got definitely got another one so boxing prize fire um second time I don't know, just knocked out or stopped Conroy Mackin. Conroy, Conroy, Conroy. Oh, but I'm not, I still can't remember him now, but that's, that's, that's not right. But I'd be like for Conroy in the quarterfinals. I broke my hand again. I broke my hand in the quarterfinals. And um, I thought, God, my hand's broke. I've got a boxing semi final next. I didn't know who was going to fight because the, the, the semi, the second quarterfinal was, was happening. And then uh, Jack Harford won. Oh, bloody hell, I've got a broken hand. I mean, I want to mean broken hand. I, leave, I couldn't even put my hand back in the glove at the end of, of my quarterfinal. I don't want to beat Conroy. Not put my hand back in the glove. I mean, it was hurting, it was throbbing. I couldn't even hit the pad, couldn't do nothing with it. And I just found out Jack Harford just won. I thought, bloody hell, no. He's six foot he's got massive reach, he's unbeaten, he's 18 and 0. How the hell am I going to beat him? Bloody hell. So, thought to myself, I'm, I'm myself, myself. I said, no, no, send them to me. I, myself, this is what I'm going to do. No, I'm going to do this. On the pace of distance, I'm not going to allow him to keep me at range because that's when he's most effective. On the pace of distance, I'm not going to hit him hard. I'm just going to flow, flow, flow with punches. Nothing too hard, just flurry. Just flow, 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 flow. The adrenaline will get pumping again. Uh, for themselves, they're very pumping, and that'll take away the actual pain from the hand. I'm not going to hit him too hard, um, and I think that's going to get me through it. I went in, I remember going into the first round, I think I lost the first round. I think I was boxed a bit too far, but I got going, I got going a bit more. Got a bit more head, bare head movement, getting to get in there, and then just unleash. And I threw about over 300 punches, and then they, they tallied it all up, Sky Sports tallied it all up. I threw a three new punches and up beating him and one on a split decision. And for me, that that, that shows, you know, that you, uh, in life, I'm, I'll, I'll do anything to go through anything to get what I want to get. And that's my mentality in my days of life. And that was a big, massive win for me to beat someone like Jack Harbour, who's a good guy. And believe me, he's technically better than me. I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that. But what I, what difference between me and him, I wanted it more. No matter how skillful you are, if you've got someone that doesn't want to die down, or someone that doesn't want to give up, they're very hard to beat, very hard to beat. You can be the most gifted fighters in the world, but you find someone like me who doesn't lie down, you're in for a hard night. And that was my man, that was my that was one really stick sticks out for me with, with regarding injuries wise. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Again, I mean it shows it shows your heart and it shows the determination. Yeah. Um, absolutely amazing. Now, as well as that, you mentioned about um Sky Sports and, and fighting on TV and everything like this. Yeah. I have to look at this from two sides, okay? One side is obviously how you felt being recognized in that way, reaching that level, going back to what you said earlier about you know, you wanted to prove people wrong, you wanted to be somebody and all that. But also yeah. I've got the other side to it where, you know, like handling the pressure and handling um anything from that point of view of being, you know, shown on, on TV. And even though you've been fighting a long time and you've been there with some great guys, I was curious the process you went through to adapt to fighting on on TV mm -hmm. and on the big stages, if that makes sense, and like, in terms of how you felt, if, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying it makes sense, yeah. Um, but I, I sort of like, with no amateur experience for me, you know, it was, it was really, really hard because when I started boxing, I, saw, I, I got into Sky Sports when I was like 21, 22, you know, no amateur experience, like I mentioned, you know. I just, um, I remember my, my Sky Sports debut of, of being like Conroy, 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 Conroy McIntosh. And then I um, got a fight. Most most boxers got a couple more, couple more time. I remember then I fought um, I fought um, um, for uh, for the British title eliminator, and I won it. I knocked him out. I thought to myself, 
do you know what? I'm not quite ready for this yet. Even though I was buzzing, I was ready. I thought, yeah, I love it. I'm living in top 10 Great Britain. I've just signed with, with Ricky Ann, signed me up. But you know what? I'm not ready for this because I wasn't experienced. And also, I didn't have the experienced people around me. That might have been different. If I had, the experience, if I had people around me that knew what they were doing and I had the experience, maybe I could have gone a bit more. Maybe in that, in that time, you know, I could have done things a bit more differently. So I, I ended up fighting again for Paul Samuels. It's only been a bit a little warm-up fight for me before my British title fight. Um, but again, the whole thing just didn't quite gel with me no more. I was sort of, I think really my manager we fell out a little bit. Didn't quite trust him. He was my trainer at the time as well. He never trained me. I, 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 I wonder, I, wonder, I remember just sitting there thinking, well, how the hell am I doing this? I ran top 10 at Great Britain. I signed for Ricky Allen. I'm winning big, big fights. You know, my next fight could be a British top fight. How the hell am I doing this? I'm doing this by fleet because I'm not, no one's taught me anything. I'm not, I'm not, don't, I'm not, no one's ever said anything how to go about doing this stuff. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm just winging it. I'm generally just winging it. My, 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 my fighting spirit's coming out. I'm knocking people out. I'm winning fights. How the hell am I doing it? I don't know how I'm getting here. I was going to fight. Without, without any game plans. Chill out, mate. Yeah, off you go. Go and fight this guy. You fight him, um, Paul Samuels. Go and I'm fighting. Um, what, what are I doing around one? I was like, oh, I don't know. I know. I just going to go in and I'll have a war. Have a fight. End up knocking each other out. End up being, again, another, another bloody war. End up bloody getting beat. Well, I shouldn't have got beat. Um, I struggled making that weight again because my weight was awful. I, was, I got put to bits because my weight was so bad. I couldn't make weight properly with a limited amount of notice. I signed a Ricky Allen and Sky Sports with my face. Didn't know how to deal with the pressure, mate. Didn't know how to deal with it, especially with no people around me. Maybe I couldn't, maybe I didn't know how to deal with the pressure. But if I had people around me who was experienced in the game, maybe they would have given me the advice I probably needed to hear. But I had none of that. And none of that. So it was hard earlier on in my career. Very, very hard earlier on in my career. Very, very hard because you know, I had no experience to deal with all that. And people around me, no, I was on my own. Just on my own. You know, it's very, very, it was very, very hard. I need someone like myself who's got experience to pass on. So this is how you got out. This is how you got to do this. What do that? Say this, do this. Don't worry. That's just what's going to happen. And none of that. None of that. I just, I just winged it. I got into like top 10 Great Britain just by bloody me winging it. Not winging it because I trained hard, I was dedicated, being good fighters, I was a good fighter myself. But yeah, man, it was hard. It was hard. It wasn't you know, later on in my career. The fight's gone on, speaking to people, being around it more, you know. you know. And then year in, year out, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to understand it now. Yeah, okay. I'm starting to be a bit more comfortable around people. I know how the gang works. That's through years and years and experience and experience, you know, how making way and that sort of stuff. Yeah, it was hard. I mean, now, that's I always say now, I always say to myself, I wish I boxed amateur. I really did. I really did because obviously then you know, I would have gone on, got the experience, I would have built up a fan base, I would have got a good promoter behind me, built up my career, you know, got, I would have got sponsors, but I did it the hardest way as ever. You know, if you look up bloody boxing, my name should be in the dictionary, my name should be under it because I am, I, am, I am what boxing is all about, I really am. Yeah, man, no, it was hard. Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, we are getting the um the two sides of the story here. You know, I mean, the, the highs and the amazing things you achieved and everything. Yeah. Like in terms of the low points of things that could have been, um, you know, could have been different if you had the right people who had your back and everything. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, as I've said before, the good news of this is at least then you can pass on some of these lessons to the youngsters and be the role model that you yourself never had for them, you know? Um, and I think that's, that's a very, um, very powerful position to be in. As we come to the sort of latter part of this, this talk today, I'd also like to get your thoughts on boxing as like the bigger picture of boxing as a sport in terms of um, the changes you've seen in the sport. And I know mm -hmm. this, this is a very big question, but, 
to, to yeah. narrow it down a little bit, we got some good changes, you know, like fight and pay and things like that with the money, but we got some negative changes with most of the fights being pay-per-view or with, say, as you know, some people don't like uh, YouTube boxing or these type of other things coming in. So, you know, there, there's two sides to it, where there's things that, where boxing's definitely improved, like the medical care, for example, definitely improved. Um, but, you know, something like, as I said before, you know, alienating a lot of the audience by every fight being pay-per-view or every fight occurring yeah. about you know, a perfect record, for example, that's something that's changed maybe from your day. Everyone wants to keep the O and they worry about it too much. So these are just some examples. But in your own words, could you share with us maybe one or two things you like about how boxing's changed? But to flip that on his head, maybe one or two things that, that you don't like about where it's going as well, because there's definitely two sides to this, and it's it's a big topic, so I've tried to narrow it down a little bit, you know? Yeah, so the things that I, I don't like, man, have been on to America, you know, especially like myself, who's doing it the right way and, and, you know, doing it the way it should be done. Like, there's all these YouTube boxes. I just, I just can't stand it, mate, you know? Maybe because I'm jealous. Probably That's probably what it is. You know? but the reason why I'm saying that is because they're in these big fights, they're in these mega money. You get a fine, be what YouTube's buying each other. I just don't get it. You know, I, I, I am the bread and butter what boxing's about. You know, I mean, when you get in the YouTube fights, boxing for millions and millions of pounds against each other, you know, and who are they? What they've done? Nothing. You know, just that. I don't like that. I don't like I'm sure many, many fighters say the same. But on the positive side of that, though, you know, you know I'm not, I hate to admit this, but. The, you are getting more eyes on boxing, you know, it just generate a lot of interest, and that's the thing, you know, they do generate a lot of interest, a lot of people are talking about it, you know, which means, you know, it's good for boxing, you know, because, you know, which means more boxing, more people want to get involved in boxing, because maybe that's what they want to do, then they like all that, but when they get involved in anything after a while, after, after a couple of weeks, man, then they ain't want to do it, um, but yeah, man, so that's good positive and negatives about it, Um Again, another thing about all these bloody pay per view things, you know, I don't like, I don't like it being on pay per view. You know, I I've, I've got Sky Sports, and now you know, I pay my monthly subscription for it, and then one minute I'm saying they've got an added fee for 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 bloody pay per view. Again, I think to myself, hold on, mate, it's, you know, how much more money do you want me to give them? You know what I mean? It's like. I think you know it should be on Sky. So everyone give everyone the, 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 to watch it. You know, everyone should be able to watch it on on Sky Sports and um, pay per view. Like, like, and then they got um, uh, media on the, on, the, on the zone and that. It's just like it's just more money off the money, money off the money, you know, which means you know, not that I think it takes away people looking at it because I, I, I say you don't pay for it. I don't pay for it, my friend. When it goes on to the pay per view, I very, very rarely pay for it. I I over I over I either download it somewhere, you know, someone sends me some sort of link. Or everyone says the same thing, send some link. It might crack a little bit, it's gonna it's gonna save me twenty-four pound ninety nine. What am I watching next day? I certainly think especially with today's climate, I've been going up, I'm not paying them twenty four pound, you know, when you know for a fact who's gonna win when, when nine times out of ten. The other card's not great normally. Main event's probably okay, but for now I don't want to watch that. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's not like, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, they're, they're the things that I don't really like and they're the things I do like in, in boxing. Yeah. Well, it's good to get your, your thoughts on it because, um, you know, you've been around the game for a long time. You know, you understand the game upside yeah. down front and everything. So it's, it's good to touch on. Are there certain boxes that you, you enjoy watching now? Though I know you said, you, you know, you don't pay for a lot of stuff and everything like that. But maybe is there like one or two guys that you really... Um, that you enjoy watching or that you follow um, more these days? Yeah, you know, um, I, I still watch all the fights. So like, you know, I still, I, 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 I'm on social media, like, so I, I'm always watching videos and docu and like interviews and all that sort of stuff. I've been watching all the main fight, the fights that have been happening. Um, and when I was fighting, I, I never used to look up to anybody. I, I never. I, I always used to like every fight. I always think to myself, you know, that, they all want to be where they are. So I look up to all fighters because they're in the position I want to be in. I want to be what they're doing. I want to do what, or they're where they're at and what, what fights are winning and all that sort of stuff. So um, now, like, I, do, I know all the main events really, I the, the Canelo's and the winning was fine. You know, I, 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 I watched a fight you know, the other day with the, you know, I can't remember the Japanese, I can't remember his name now. Um, Louis, I can't remember his name now, but he, he, he could be, he beat Felton, Felton. 
Um, he knocked him out, which was a great performance. I mean, unbelievable performance that was. I'm looking forward to, to tomorrow's fight. You sick. Dubai, that'll be a great little fight. But I think you sick is going to be a, too slippery for him, too slicky for him. Lion's feet is going to be slipping the shots. I don't think he's going to hit clean. I don't, I don't think Dubai, Dubai for me is a bit, big bit, a bit, um, um, He's got that stature of um, Frank Bruno, very sort of like bodybuilder type. Like he's going to play to use six hands for me. I fast, I think personally for me. Um, so when the big fights I'm going to do, mm. I do tend to watch some some of the of the undercard. I'm not much. I don't. I don't. Before when I, was, when I was boxing, I need to know where what everyone was doing. I don't know who they were fighting. I don't know what the light wing camp. I know what the hell they're sparring. With. I don't know who how they're training. Um, so I don't. I'm not like that like I used to. But I still, still keep on con, still keep on it a little bit, but not nowhere near as much as I used to. Nowhere near as much as I used to, you know, very, very rarely. But yeah, I still keep up with the big, big fights. I'll always watch the big, big fights. Uh, but yeah, so not much as I used to, you know, but yeah, still, still watch, still watch it, still, um, still like to know what's going on. Yeah, still keep my eye on the sport. That's cool. Well, we've talked about your future plans. So the only other thing I have to give a quick mention to, we'll uh, we'll wrap this up shortly because then it's a good length for people to, to listen to and it's it's not too much. But um, one thing I would like to mention as well, when it comes to your personal fans, you know, the people who would pay to watch you fight and the people who would contribute in that way, um, I'd like to just see what you'd like to say to those people because I know obviously with... Um, training yourself and all the things you did, you didn't really have a lot of help in in that sense behind the scenes. But you definitely were a popular fighter and still are, you know, and a very respected um, fighter and a very respected individual, and, and rightly so, you know. And I'd just like to get um, a feel for what you think when you think back now to those people who supported your career in that way in terms of buying the tickets and turning up to watch the fights and or uh, you know as we were talking about you know watching you on on a telly uh any whatever form it comes in that's the type of support that you had in a different way even though you didn't have the support with like the you know the business side of it so um what would you say to those people if if there's anyone watching this who was um a fan of yours who you know came to your fights yeah. and, and that type of thing yeah for me it's like it was like a weird, you know what like i always get like people from America and they just like send me like some pictures for me to sign and send like a dollar for me to sign there because I'll get stamps send it back and I get random people to post me some pictures of me to sign or even lately a lot, a lot of social media now now social media's a big hit now but I'll get random messages like all the other day actually about saying about how I don't know big puncher and how rare I respect you right? it's even to this day now and then the things that it's really well, I never give up in mind when I was boxing because that is what I, I live in. I mean, it makes me feel so proud to be able to have people, people who I don't know, don't know, you know, message me on social media to say what a great fire I am. You know, it means everything to me. It means to me. That's, no, that's, that's the reasons why I never never gave up, mate. It's because to, to, just to hear that and to, and to be able to read that from people and the random people on the streets, you know, even today, you know, people in mean, mean, Peter come up to me and like shake my hand and you know, wanted to get a pitch me from from over up town. So that that that's something that I can never be so so grateful for. And that that and that those sort of things there when I was boxing, I used to get a lot of that. That always used to make make me get out of bed, you know, get training and just keep pounding that road, keep training hard, keep sparring even through injuries, through times where fights used to pull pull through and I was being camped for nine weeks and my the fight should have pulled out and I think oh bloody hell, what a waste of time that was and but those messages, oh, that support was 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 massive for me, massive for me. And it made me so proud to sort of like have that. Um people sort of you know, give me sort of all the best look and then what a fantastic career I have. You know, because I am what boxers about. You know, fight anyone, anywhere, anytime, value for money, and you're know, always guaranteed excitement. Absolutely, yeah, hundred and ten percent, and I think that really is how you're remembered as a fighter, as you say, pure. You know what box is all about, and uh, and that's the way. Well, you know, champ, we've talked about a lot today, nice mix of different topics, and I know when I interview people who've achieved as much as you, you know, there's always more we could talk about. But like I say, you know, for it to be a good length for for people to enjoy listening to, um. Yeah. 
course, it's a good land. So I'd like to thank you for your time. But as well as that, I'd like to thank you for sharing everything you shared in such a sort of brutally honest way, you know, sure. um, the highs, the lows. I know that's the type of guy you are, but I, I appreciate it because everything you were sharing was so raw and so real, you know. And some of the stories, like when I was listening, I felt like I was there. I was like, wow, yeah. I really picture it. So thank you for all of that, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure and I've enjoyed it. And I really hope you've enjoyed it as well, you know. Thank you, thanks for having me, my friend. Anytime, mate. Like I said before, you know, I'm always willing to share my experiences throughout my career and what's going to happen in my day to day life today. So, no problem at all, my friend. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work you're doing as well um, with yeah, sure. the youngsters and every, everything like that. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon.